CataractCoach.com. The anterior capsule rips uncontrollably. Can we finish the case and implant the IOL? Watch carefully. It's a very young patient with a cataract here. Beautiful dilation. Everything looks fine. Now, the surgeon is an anonymous surgeon who's going to use a special device to help create a capsulotomy. And when the device fires, which will come up very shortly, there it goes. The nucleus becomes more opaque, and it's not exactly clear what's happened here. But when a little bit of hydrodissection is attempted, the capsule doesn't look normal. In fact, it's ripped, and ripped in an uncontrolled manner. So the technique now, the surgeon is going to place the phaco probe in the eye and just very gently aspirate out this relatively soft lens. So being very careful not to induce any further damage to the capsule. Now further complicating things is that this patient was to get a multifocal toric IOL. And so just removing the lens and material here, we're going to see in a moment just how ripped the capsule is. Is the capsular support going to be sufficient to be able to hold and securely position that toric eye well? So switching over to the IA probe, removing the lens cortex, now you can see what's remaining of the anterior lens capsule. Now fortunately, the posterior capsule is still completely intact. So why did this happen? It's not exactly clear. Probably a combination of the patient's tissues, the device that's being used, Sometimes it's a little bit of bad luck, but what's more important than that is how do we recover from it? And this anonymous surgeon is doing a really nice job. So cleaning up the capsule, removing as much of the lens material as possible, and then trying to preserve the remainder of the capsule. Here's the viscoelastic. Now you can see very much the outline of what happened when that anterior capsule ripped uncontrollably. So this looks pretty good. Poster capsule, again, is still intact. And there'll be a good place to put that single piece acrylic lens. So again, a little more viscoelastic. Here comes the lens. It's a single piece acrylic lens, trifocal, as well as toric. And that's going to go in the eye very nicely, very gently. And then it'll be positioned so that the dots of the toric lens are lined up with the steep axis markings. And so putting it around here, you can see it's also a relatively large eye. You can see the size of the eye compared to the IOL. The IOL looks small. This patient's probably very myopic, has a large anterior segment size. So you can't always predict when things are going to go south, when you'll get a complication. You got to be able to just roll with it and recover from it. Everyone's going to end up fumbling the ball at some point. The main question is, do you recover the ball? And this is a good example where, in this case, everything was recovered. So here, there's the lens. You can see the, the uh, diffractive rings of the lens. Viscoelastic being removed from the eye. This will be cleaned up nicely. I'm happy to report this, this patient actually did quite well, all things considered, and has a nice stable position of this eye well. Fortunately, this IOL material is very tacky, so it's adherent to the uh, posterior capsule, and it stays where you place it, even though there's not a complete 360-degree overlap of the optic by the capsular axis. It's sufficient enough to keep the lens in good position as it heals up, and this patient, again, has had a beautiful result in the post op period. So our take-home lesson here is be prepared for anything you have to be able to think on your feet and recover from a complication such as this one. The surgeon is doing a great job. I really appreciate the submission. And I encourage you, if you have an interesting case like this, submit it. We'll all learn together. Here's the end of the case. Pupil comes down nicely. It looks great. Again, check out cataractcoach.com. There's a link there. You can submit your video. We'll keep it anonymous, and we'll all learn a lot. Thanks for watching.